What is up, friends? Today, I'm going to be going over all the different ways you can edit in Vim. So this is going to be a longer video. Feel free to kind of navigate along in the chapters if you want to look at how to yank or how to delete or some other specific operation. Generally, I'm going to be going over both of those things like deleting, copying, editing, and different macros. So stay around to the end and I'll show you some cool macros tricks. Let's jump into it and we'll get started. All right, so I have a generic TypeScript file. I've been doing some streaming on Twitch. So if you're into that, check out the link in the bottom and I'll post a link there. Other than that, uh, we just have some, some code we wanna edit and I have my keyboard shortcuts there so you can see exactly what's going on. Essentially, I wanna go over the anatomy of motions. So D, that's going to delete a line. C is going to change. And then Y is going to yank. And G is a global pattern match and something that is kind of like extra bonus commands. So delete, change, yank, and then G for a bunch of other like pattern matching stuff. You can combine all of those in different combinations. So let's say I wanted to delete three lines. So I would do three ED and it would delete these three lines. I can hit U to undo. If I wanted to do it a little bit differently, I could do D3J and it would do the same operation. So I'm still deleting down, but I'm using the J key, which are our movement keys. So you can combine the different parts of the operation with different commands. You're combining motions with those operations. An example of doing a yank, you can come in here inside of this, these curly braces here, and do a YI and curly brace. And you can see in our buffer, it copies the inside of that. Maybe a different example would be a VI visual mode. And you can see I'm selecting just inside of there. This is part of the advanced highlighting techniques. So if I wanna highlight something with visual mode, uh, if I wanna do block mode, then I do a capital V and it'll highlight everything. And I can do J and K to go up and down. Or like we just did, if I do a VI curlies, it'll highlight inside. If I do a VA curlies, you see it grabs the curly braces as well. And so a nice hack here is if you select everything in the curlies, you go into capital V visual block mode, then I can grab all of this and I can even hit X, which would cut and then paste it again to you know, move this, this code around wherever I need it to go. What I'm doing here is I am hitting capital P to paste above the line that I'm on, and then P will paste right where I'm on exactly. Another way you can highlight is doing V and doing dollar sign to the end of the line. If I needed to start there, grab everything in a line, instead of doing like a YY command, I could manage it that way. I know others like to do that uh, capital V and then D command instead of doing a capital D. Both of those do the same thing, but you get the idea. Let's say that I wanna change all of these send response to something else. So I can do a colon uh, percent S and then match on send response. I wanna change that to something response. I wanna make the name even worse. If I do this, then I hit enter, it will change just the first one. But if I do a slash G, it will change all of them in the file and I can just get this in one go. So I do that and you can see all of this matches something response. So we were able to update everything in the file and that's a quick way to rename things within a, within a file. If I wanted to see just where these occurrences are, then I can do a forward slash send response and hit enter. And then I can go and hit in and it'll jump to each of these and I can do a capital N to go back. This lets me navigate. And then whenever I'm on a certain word, then I can do a change inner word and change it and then hit escape and go back to what I needed to do. Another way I could do a regex pattern match is I could do the percent S again. And let's try our example of send response. And let's say I want to use that word, but I want to add more more stuff onto it. So I can do the ampersand and say Bob on the end of it. This will be send response Bob and we should see that reflected. So now this is reflected in all of the different places in the whole file. We now have a send response to Bob. Let's say I'm here in the middle of this send response command 
and I really need to rename it to like send request or something, something else. What I can do is hit capital C and that'll put me in insert mode and then I can type, you know, whatever I need to. So send request and something in the middle here and complete it. If I want to change the entire line, I can do CC and then I'll clear out the entire line and I can modify it however I need to. One of the things you'll quickly run into whenever you're yanking and changing text is whenever you want to change something. So like I'm going to delete this. If I paste again, I get that same thing that I just deleted. So if I'm changing, usually I want to change it in a few places. The Primogen actually showed me a really cool thing whenever he was doing some of his videos. So if we open up our VMRC and we go to, so this command here, what it does is it maps the leader key, which for me is space bar and then space P. What this will do is copy that thing into the underscore register so that I don't lose it. So if we go back to our other file, then I can yank this while. So I have that here, but if I want to paste it without losing what I have copied, then I can grab this and do a leader P and then now I have while and in my buffer, I still have the while really nice way to not lose what's in your buffer and instead have a way to paste things and like continue to repaste them. One of the cool things with changing is you can jump to inside of something, even if you're on the front of the line. So let's say I want to modify the text inside of these little tick marks here. So if I'm on the front, and I do a C I and tick mark, it'll change everything inside of that tick mark. I don't have to navigate to it and then change it. It'll jump to it. Just note if you're inside of like curly braces or if you're inside of parentheses already, then you'll have different behavior. So watch out for that. We've been deleting a few bits of text here off and on. The D key is the one that will delete. If I do DD, it will delete a whole line. I can combine that with 3DD like we did in the beginning and delete things. Something to note is that whenever I delete something, it's actually in my, in my buffer. So I can do a P and I will paste that a bunch of times. If I delete something else, then that will be what is in my buffer and what I will paste every time. If you need to delete something while you're in insert mode, hit control W and it'll delete backwards. So if you're right here in the middle, you need to delete send response, control W, We'll knock that out for you. One of the things that took me a minute to figure out is how to delete up. So let's say I'm down here on this line in the while loop and I need to delete all the way up to the while. So I can do 2DK and that will delete up. And that way I don't have to jump up, delete down every time I can do it in one motion. If I need to delete to the end of a line, then I can use capital D and you can see that clears out through the end. Uh, usually I'll hit A and combine something that I want to now call instead of whatever that thing was. That's a good way to delete to the end uh, instead of doing like the visual selection. So you could also do V and then dollar sign to get to the end and then delete. Same thing works. You just got to be careful because as you can see, it deleted the new line. And so we now we have to make sure that we bring that back down. Like we did with our visual selection, we can do a D A P and that will delete that whole while loop because it's selecting the continuous block. So if we did this again, we would be able to do a DAP and delete everything inside of there. So A and I are going to delete the inside or outside surrounding white space. So use those whenever you can to delete those continuous blocks. Let's say I'm on the front of this line and I want to delete everything up into push. So I can do D forward slash push and hit enter and then I'll delete everything up until that point. You can use this in the middle of lines. So I can do the same thing where I want to delete to the letter, you know, or maybe the, the word converted. So D forward slash converted and I delete all the way up to that. So use the forward slash commands to do that deleting so that you can find things really quickly and just delete up to them. An alternative way is to do the T and the F commands. So F is going to go up to and include that character and T is going to delete everything up until that. So if I do DTC, then it'll delete everything up until the C letter. If I do a DFC, it's going to delete the C character as well. That's another way inside of a line that you can go forward to delete something and combine both the delete 
and the motion to accomplish what you need to. Now for copying, so if you do YY, this will copy the whole line that you're on. You want to copy inside of some curly braces, you can do a YI and curly, and that will copy inside of that. And notice that it keeps the spacing for you, which is pretty nice. And then if you're doing like the continuous blocks, so you can do a YIP, and I'll do the, the whole block there of the while loop because it's all one line. So if we had spaces in between, then we could do this and it would do a YIP and we would only get the guts of that because those are the pieces that don't have any space around them. Whenever you're copying whole lines, note that it copies the new line as well. So if I do YY and paste, notice that it gives me a new line. If I need this to actually go over a line, you can do a capital V and then paste and then you don't have that extra space inserted. So note that if you want things to be in line. One of the things I like to do is actually remap the capital Y to be Y dollar sign to match the capital C and the capital D functionality. So if I'm over here and I wanna grab everything from this point to the end of the line, then I can do capital Y and you can see that it does that. So I only get response to the end of the line instead of the whole line, which is not really what I want. So this helps you to maintain, you know, a level of sanity and not have to remember that Y actually behaves a little bit differently. If you like Vim content like this and you want more videos, definitely like and subscribe and let's go and I'll show you some cool stuff about macros. Okay, so there's a few different ways you can modify multiple lines in Vim. So you can do the visual block mode, which is Control shift V and then I can go down a couple do shift I and then hit ASDF. If I hit escape, then I will show that ASDF is on all three of the lines. So let's do that. And you can see that change happens. I can do the same thing with macros hit Q to start recording a macro and we'll record it into the W key. So W and then let's do I. ASDF, hit escape to go out of insert mode, and then down and over three. From here, we will stop recording our macro, hit Q to stop recording, and then we want to apply this same macro on the next two lines. So we'll do two at W, and it'll do the same thing that we just did, and that way we don't have to, you know, only go to the front of the line and make changes. This lets you do multi-line edits pretty quickly. Another way to do multi-line edits is using regexes like we did before. So if we do visual line mode, go all the way down and then we hit colon. So you can see in the bottom left that we have just the selection that's going to be applied. So if we say, you know, let's do an S we'll substitute let with ASDF let, and we'll do it on all of them. If we hit enter then we should see ASDF let on all three lines. And we do. So, that's another way that you can do multi-line edits. This is something that is really handy, especially when you're doing mass changes or mass refactoring things inside of a file. If you like videos like this, definitely hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.